Welcome back to the John Roberts Gaming Channel. This is John Roberts, and you are watching episode two of my match with Tabletop Buddy Lee. But before we do that, I want to ask you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and do all those wonderful things that you do. So, Lee vs. John Roberts, episode two. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so Soviet Union, round three, we're gonna just purchase some land here. Eight infantry, one artillery. That's a good buy. Now he's got 18, 19 here. We got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I think we already counted that, didn't we? So we can't do that. That would not work out. Now to hold this, we need 18, 19, 20. And there's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So let's see about trading these two. We're going to do two one-on-ones. All right, one fighter with each of them. And we'll really just uh, hold our position here for now. Make sure that we could hold West Russia. That's the best thing that the Soviet Union could do to slow down the, the Germans. So two one-on-ones. May the dice god be with us. I find it funny that one is strong and the other favorable. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, let's... Okay, so we did not get Belarusia, and I got lucky because I accidentally clicked the uh, press on rather than retreat and took a shot at him with just my fighter. Luckily, he did not hit back, and I still have my fighter. So it can go back in West Russia. All these infantry, these couple artillery. I'm going to send one infantry here just to block his tanks. The other infantry, Vilagda, keep him safe next to Russia. Bring this one over. Maybe, you know what? Yeah, let's do Novorosbursk. All right, more little targets, little targets. Since I have this little target up here, let's give him another little target here. So, Caucasus, we'll put the artillery in Caucasus with three infantry. The remaining in a, Russia. All right. Let's see what Germany's got in store for us. United Kingdom round three. Let's take a look around, see what Germany did. 12 infantry, one tank, two artillery. I cost them one IPC in repair. Okay, a tank blitz, tank blitz, pretty much took some free land down in Africa. He also took Persia. We're gonna have to take that back. We have to decide having Burma might not make a difference, uh, but we don't want him stacking up Burma either, do we? So that's a little bit of a pain. He also took Archangel with two infantry. That's a little bit of a pain too. Took Ukraine, Northwest Europe, and then his non-coms, Poland, Karelia, Germany, uh, Belarus, Baltic States, Transjordan, Egypt, and then mobilized. They put a tank in Karelia, and then Germany and Italy filled them up. So the United Kingdom, I want to be able to put a fighter. Let's let's see. We have two transports already. So I buy a third transport. There's one, two, three, four units here, so we would need four more units. And then we need three units for India. That's enough for a fighter. And we could save one IPC. Because I really want to land one of one of these fighters in West Russia. I counted this up, and I have enough to hold this, I think, 
if I put all of this infantry in here. But I would really like to try and get Archangel back from him. Otherwise he can tank blitz. So I really want to get another fighter in here. So I run it through the calculator. If I use two infantry, and then I have one more infantry here for Archangel, and I land British fighter and these two US fighters in West Russia, and I put all of these units aside from two, I would have an 85% chance of holding this. I think that's pretty good in defense. 85 in defense, I, I consider to be pretty definite. So combat moves. So we can't let him just have free reign of Africa. I'm actually going to take these two and I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down to South Africa with these units. And just so I don't forget, I'll bring the cruiser because I want the cruiser with this transport. Now this mess here. Hmm. So I suppose we can go one and one with a fighter and a bomber. I guess that works. I guess that works. And up here, I'm just going to take France with everything we got. These four units. Or should I go for Northwest? See if I can get these five units. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should go for Northwest instead. With these two fighters, bombardment. Maybe I get more profit that way. We'll see. Anything else the United Kingdom capable of doing? Does not appear to be. May the dice gods be with us. Okay, so this worked out in northeast, uh, I'm sorry, northwest Europe. Uh, I said before this that I was looking for profit. That was, I worded that wrongly. I'm not looking for profit. I'm looking to take as many IPCs from the Germans as possible. So if I took this, the only profit I would gain is the UK would get six IPCs for that one, that one round, and he likely would have lost one or two units. This way I took... I get two IPCs, but I took five units away from him. So it probably took a total of one or two more IPCs away from the Germans than if I had just simply landed troops here. So maybe, I don't know, what, what do you think? Let me know. What did the use the viewers think about this? Would you have rather have just landed in France or attacked the infantry? All right, land the aircraft back here. We did not get Persia. It was unfortunate, but he has no... Uh, tanks here so no big loss we did get Burma which was a little more important don't want to land both of these fighters here one of these fighters we want to land in West Russia of course don't want to forget about that this sub let's send it somewhere south to be a nuisance how about 44 how about maybe 45 I'm gonna send this down to 45 I like that better. I can get it over to 37, 38, 47, 48. I like that better. 50. Okay. Double and triple check. Everything looks good. New fighter. Three infantry to India. Three, or sorry, seven to United Kingdom. Okay, Japan, what do you got in store for us? USA round three. Well, 
review Japan for infantry, one artillery, one industrial complex. Alright, so Kazak, Soviet Far East. Burma, no units lost in battle. He has two infantry there again, that's kind of annoying. Four fighters to 61. Moved a bunch of units to Yunnan, unloaded a bunch of units to Yunnan. Bomber and infantry to Szechuan. Infantry to Barrietia. Infantry to Xinjiang. Industrial complex in Manchuria. Four infantry, one artillery, mobili mobilized in Japan. We want two more transports. That will give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine transports. With that, we're gonna need some uh, land units. Eight of them sounds good. Okay. So now, with his bombers here, still can't leave transports here. So we could send a couple of American units down here. That's out of range. We could use one transport. That would be a non-combat move. We're gonna take Finland and Norway. Now to do this, we have one, two, three, and he has one, two, three. So I think we'll take the cruiser with us and we'll leave the destroyer behind. So the British need to take both of this. So only have five, six, seven that can reach. And they have three, four, five, six, seven. Let's take the two territories. And we'll send the cruiser up now so we don't forget. Uh, we'll do a bombing run. I see nothing else. May the dice gods be with us. So that was a little bad luck for us, uh, lost the bomber. That's the risky take. I still will do it every time and take that 1 in 6 chance when I have nothing else to do with my bomber. It wasn't doing much except being a hit point here. Alright, so let's move those transports back. So I'm going to take one artillery and one infantry down to French West Africa. Okay, two more infantry. Sorry, two more transports, four more infantry up into Canada. Uh, this fighter will put up into Canada as well. Destroyer into 18. This battleship into 18. This infantry into West Russia. These two infantry into West Russia. Okay. Let's mobilize our units. Two transports. Artillery with seven infantry. Let's send it over to the Soviet Union. Seven infantry, one artillery, sounds good. So he's got 36 units that can come into West Russia. So if I could get another seven units in here, uh, that would be great. What do we have here? We have five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so there's one unit here we could use here, and then two units here. And then that's our seven units. I'm not gonna be concerned about this, let's see. He has one infantry, one bomber, one fighter uh, that could attack Moscow. So I'll make sure I have six units in here. Let's do this. Let's take the chance here. Use one more unit. All right, may the dice gods be with us, please. We got this one favorable. Need some good dice.
Okay, so that all worked out. So we'll land our fighters back in West Russia, put every other unit that we could possibly send to West Russia to West Russia. We double and triple check. We do not want to move any of these units. So that looks good. We put the artillery and three infantry in Caucasus and the other four infantry in Russia. So let's see what Germany has in store for us. It is round four, it is UK's turn. Let's take a look at what Germany did. 13 infantry and two tanks, that's a lot of land units. And he has uh, continued his conquest of Africa. I have to see what we could do about this. A lot of IPCs that he's collecting. All right, he took back Northwest Europe, Archangel, you lost an infantry in Archangel. Okay, Karelia. Two bombers to Poland. Five fighters to Germany. Okay, Baltic States. One tank to Belgian Congo. Infantry to Anglo Egypt. One infantry to Egypt. One infantry to Persia. Alright, C Zone 17. Dropped off two infantry into Transjordan. Okay, put two tanks out of Karelia, ten infantry out of Germany, and three infantry out of Italy. So the United Kingdom, he's got, we'll say, 16. So we kind of got to get these two. Th this infantry doesn't mean all that much right now. Perhaps the Soviets can take this? We'll have to see. And we'll get an artillery. We'll hold on to two IPCs. So I definitely want France, but I also want to try to take Northwest Europe, load up all the infantry, two into France, two into Northwest Europe, both fighters, cruiser. All right, we need two infantry here. Now we'll use the bomber and the fighter, that way it's four on two. Okay, let's take these two infantry and land them. Here in Belgian, Belgian Congo, we'll bring the cruiser for support. Hopefully that works out. Probably kind of risky. Unlikely. So there's probably like a 66% chance of hitting him on the first round. So let's see if that happens. May the dice gods be with us. I was uh, pretty lucky here in Belgian Congo. I missed with the cruiser, but I still managed to take the uh, region and not lose any units, and he lost the tank. So that worked out well. Now he can only attack these two infantry with one infantry and one tank. We'll just land this aircraft back in India. The sub, I'm going to put the sub in 38. Land the two fighters back in C Zone 8. I think that looks pretty good. I don't see any other units that I want to move. I'm not moving any of these in India. Any of these in C Zone 8. I'm not moving this fighter. Can't really move these. Alright. That looks good. The tank in India. The artillery in UK. Fill up the other two slots with infantry and remaining infantry in UK. Let's see what the Japanese got in store for us. USA round four. How did Japan do? 
Seven infantry, one transport, three tanks. Took Yakut. Took Burma, lost an infantry there. Took a Zak. Okay, Yunnan, four fighters to 61. One unit infantry to Sheshwan. Okay, transport in 62. Three infantry in Manchuria. Four infantry and three tanks uh, on Japan. So we're going to continue. Finland Shuck. Does he have? He has one fighter here, two bombers there. So he can reach here with three, so that's pretty good. Get here with five, six, seven. Let's get two more transports. I think six infantry and two artillery. With these units in French West Africa, we'll take French Equatorial Africa. Let's see if we can get Archangel for the Germans here. I think that's all my combat for the USA. I could take back Iceland, as long as I keep an aircraft carrier here. So Iceland has become a useless space for me, and Germany has this one infantry that's marooned there for the rest of the game. So that's fine with me. Alright, we have a nice cut with us. Alright, that was a success. The fighter's back in West Russia. Make sure we replace fighter in C-Zone 3 with another fighter. Let's get these four infantry into Finland with these two. So I have eight there. Not enough to defend against this stack, but enough where now he's got to think about what he's going to do about the U.S. just uh, building up more forces. We got two transports there, two transports there. So that's four, five, six. That's enough for 12. We do not have 12. We have eight. Okay, bring these to 10. Let's get this transport back to 11. We double and we triple check. Okay. Transports. Eight more land units. Eastern USA. Let's send it over to the Soviet Union. So this is an interesting game we have going here. Uh, some of the outcomes have definitely been unexpected. I think that goes without saying. But my opponent is playing a good game. He is experienced. He's an experienced tabletop player. And he has, hasn't made any mistakes. I can't help but feel that if the dice were going more in my favor, I'd be in a much better position. But who knows, and can I win this game? It's actually like a challenge to see if I can claw my way back. So can I? There's only one way to find out. So that does it for this episode. Please make sure you don't miss out on episode 3 of Lee vs. John Roberts. If you're enjoying this video, please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, do all those wonderful things that you do. And as always, thank you for watching.